Welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to try to uh, solve this problem, uh, explain this piece of code. At the same time, I'm going to try to follow the general steps you should follow in the coding interview while trying to explain this piece of code and also solve this problem. So first of all, let's uh, try to restore this uh, question to understand what it is about. So given an input array nums and an integer k, return true if it is possible to divide this array into k non-empty subsets whose sums are all equal. So let's see we have this kind of the input array k is equal to 4. We are going to return true here. Uh, so because it's possible to divide this uh, into four subsets with equal sum. So let's see the constraints. So the constraint says the k is anywhere between 1 to uh, 16 and k should be smaller than the length of the input array. The length of the input array is anywhere between 1 to 16 as well. So um, the each number within the input array is anywhere between 0 to 10k, so no negative number. So currently uh, not too much of the room to think about ash case. Let's see how to solve this problem. So the solution is in general to use recursion plus backtracking. We um, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, the sum of the input array modular k is equal to zero, uh, which means uh, we could uh, we could potentially uh, be able to uh, to divide the input array as k subsets that has equal sum. And the second step is for us to call uh, the DFS function, which is a helper function on top of the input. Uh, so I would explain what uh, each of the parameter means. So first, uh, first nums is the input nums array. Used, uh, used Boolean array is to track which number has been used uh, before um, within this nums array index is uh, which number we are going to go through uh, like the start index we are going to go through uh, for the current recursion current sum is the current subset uh, the sum of the current subset so for example let's say we have a subset which is uh, we are trying to create the subset for one four and we currently we only have one number which is one within the subset then the current sum is going to be one so after we add the other number, which is 4 into our uh, subset, then the current sum is going to be 5. And the current subset is which, which subset we are trying to uh, create. So for example, if we are creating the, current, the, the second subset here, then the current subset is going to be 1. So that's because we are using the 0 based index instead of 1 based index. And then the target sum is, uh, for this example, it's going to be the sum of the array divided by four, and the target set is just a equal by. It's just a. It's just the same as k. So the runtime is going to be O n factorial. That's because for it, for the first step we have n choices, n choices for the number. Second cho second step we have. Uh, n minus one choices, so on and so forth. Uh, so essentially, most likely it's n uh, factorial, but for for this ex ex implementation, is kind of like a n to the power of n, so something like that. Um, so space wise, we are looking at all of n regarding the space complexity. So let's go through this piece of code uh, together. So. Uh, we are trying to implement this kind of partition k subset function. We have two parameters, the nums array and the k. So first of all, we are trying to get the sum of the input array to see if we can modular uh, by k equal to zero. Uh, so if not, then we simply return false. Otherwise, uh, the next step, we are going to do the sorting uh, from the smallest to the largest for the input array, uh, which is useful for the next when we try to cut the branch. And then uh, if the target number is actually smaller than the largest number within the input array, then we simply return false because that's a legal input. And then uh, the next thing, we are going to define the used boarding array and uh, call this DFS function. So for the DFS function, if the current set is equal to the target set, which means uh, we have already created uh, the 
k subsets, uh, then uh, it means uh, it's a final final. It is it's like finally we succeed. Then we are just going to return true. So that's the exit of this uh, recursive function. And for the next one, um, for the general logic, we are going to go through uh, the the numbers from index to the until the last number within the nums array. So there are a couple of the uh, cutting branch, uh, the, the logic to cut the branch. So if we have already used this number, we just going to continue. So if we haven't used this number, but we have used the next number, but and the next number is essentially the same as the current number, then we are just going to continue. So for example, uh, let's say we have an array like two, 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 two three. So if we have, if we didn't use this one, but we use this one, like we di we just uh, didn't use the first two, but we use the second two, that doesn't make sense because essentially you could just uh, use the first two and then this then the second two set as false to get the same result. So that's uh, that's the thing we want to try to uh, save the runtime for. And then uh, we have the sum as the uh, current sum plus the current number we are uh, looking at. And if the sum is already larger than the target sum, we just simply break. Because uh, for the rest of the number, number, it is already sorted. You cannot get anything out of it. So, and then if it is usable, then we mark the current number uh, as used. And at the end, we are going to uh, flip the bit uh, to the to before. So uh, if the sum is equal to the target sum, uh, what we could do is uh, we are going to we are going to create a new subset from uh, refresh. It's kind of like a refresh because we have already uh, created one subset uh, that satisfies the condition. So we are going to call nums used. Index is going to be starting from idx. Uh, oh, sorry, for starting from zero, because we are creating a brand new subset. Current sum is going to be zero because of the brand new subset, and uh, we increase the current subset by one. That's because we are creating a new one. So this one target sum target set stays the same and similar for this for the second one. If this this means the sum is actually smaller than the target sum, uh, then it means we are still trying to insert numbers into our current subset. So essentially, it's just a so we we set this as idx plus one, which is different from here. That is because if we have already. Uh, so it means uh, we start from the the next number instead of like uh, starting from all the way from the, the start point. So that can also save us uh, some runtime. So it's similar logic, uh, a similar uh, intuitive idea. If we have uh, already visited the numbers uh, before IDX, uh, there's no way for us to ju just like uh, revisit the number when we try to create the same subset. So um, and then same thing here, and finally we are going to mark it as uh, false uh, to do backtracking. So if none of them return true, then we return false. So I will explain how uh, why it why the the branch cutting thing makes sense. So I did a bunch of the summation like this, uh, like this one. We have uh, this kind of task case, uh, like a lot of two and the three. So that's where, uh, where the, uh, okay, so this piece of code, we don't have that one. So you can see the difference between this piece of code and the, the workable thing that I explained before is, uh, here I just check whether it is used, but I didn't check uh, whether uh, whether the the current number is equal to the next number and the next number is used but the current number is not used so if that's the case uh, we could potentially uh, do the branch cutting to save the runtime so and uh, that's it for this question I think uh, if you have any question regarding the general solution 
uh, feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, please help subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.